Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I use. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. We're here with Kat Bradley after her first buck hunt. Woo! How was it? It was crazy. Yeah. It was better than I could have ever imagined. So, yeah. I mean, it's crazy how it came together. I like know. Like last minute. You texted me on Thursday. It's Monday now, mm -hmm. right? Monday. So you texted me on Thursday and you were like, want to want to go hunting? And I have a wedding that I have to be involved in starting on Wednesday, Wednesday night. And so I was like, ah. I talked to, before I told you my day, I like talked to everyone involved and they were like, what are you crazy? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody say do it? Carson, my husband. Did he? Was, yeah. He was like, he was like, man, we, we talked about it. It was yeah. like, you know, how can we make this happen? He's the one that was like, okay, what if you could come back the eighth for dinner? Um, so then we talked to everyone and it, it, you know, I got, you know, everyone was like, oh, you better be back and you better not tell the bride. <laughs> <laughs> so she doesn't know you came she, and did she this? Did. She did. Oh. She knows now. Okay. Um, yeah, thank God. Um, but uh, then, uh, so texted you, said, can we do it? Can we finish by the 8th? With well, men? first, first, you know, you said you can't. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I did. Because I, I we were just going through it and we we're like... Oh, man, it probably won't work. Yeah. Like, you know, because I've been out with friends who, you know, it, it they've archery hunted and, it's, you know, use the full nine days mm -hmm. and they haven't tagged out. And then when I went, it took five days, you know, mm -hmm. my, when I, um, first went and that's, you know, so like two days, really one day, like mm -hmm. if we didn't get it yesterday, it would have been tight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so that was, so then you were like, boo. And then after you said boo, I couldn't say no. I was like, I got to make this happen. <laughs> yeah. you know? And so figured it out. You said I could be home by the eighth. I I've, said, I said, yes, we can get it done. We're winners. Yeah. We're winners. And I was like, <laughs> okay, book my flight. Meanwhile, I'm in meetings while I'm on, <laughs> yeah. I'm texting you. Um, so multitasking. Yeah, I'm good at it. <laughs> mm, good. So yeah, it came together it, last minute. It's last minute as it gets for coming from Hawaii to Oregon. You had no tag. You had to buy your license, buy your tag. You had to fly <laughs> here, which is a whole process in and of itself. Yeah, took a red eye S yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, red eye. Still got your run in. Yep, got because I am starting a training block right now. So I did. Uh, Knowing I was going to miss a few days, I was like, okay, I got to get um, my 20 in. My I did 17 Friday, 20 Saturday. That's big back-to-back -back days. Yeah, big back-to-back -back days. Yeah. Took a, finished my 20, packed, jumped in the water, went straight to the airport, um, got in a plane, middle seat. <laughs> 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 Didn't sleep a wink. Um, oh, man. Bought my hunting license <laughs> and the layover and then um, picked me up and we went straight there. Yeah. Yeah. It actually, I mean, it couldn't have went any better. I mean, I was feeling pressure too because it's, you know, it's kind of expensive. Yeah. You have a lot going on. Yeah. It's, it was last minute, which what, what I, what I love about you is most people are like so schedule oriented or life oriented where they can't just take something on like that last minute, you yeah. know, and it's, you know, and I understand it. It's like our life is dictated on schedules and, you know, your work and your whatever obligations you have. So I get it, but I love that you did it. I mean, you got here and we freaking made it happen. Well, you can't, you know, I, I was thinking about it the first time when I said no and I'm, I, I like said no and it just, I had a, just, it was like a gut punch. I was like, ah, and like, I want to be a yes man. 
Like yeah. I, I like living my life like that, being mm-hmm. a yes man. And, and then as soon as I said yes, I just got, I was like pumped. I felt like, like I got my first adrenaline dump there. I was like, yeah. we're doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't that hard. You know, I had meetings all day today, actually, that I just, you know, rescheduled and um, bought the flight and, you know, worth every second. Yeah. And you, well, you almost got arrested. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on Saturday, before I got on the plane, I have the, I had a 20 miler and um, I was doing this awesome route that goes up this ridge in Hawaii um, and it connects to this awesome trail system. And I, but there's to go up the ridge, it's like 1500 feet and less than a mile. Um, And then you pop out on road that connects to the other trail, but it's, you know, air force road. Mm. It's like private, very secretive stuff, but I've gotten away with it a few times. We won't tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very intentionally not saying where, <laughs> but it's cool trail yeah. <laughs> worth the risk. Um, and then, but first time ever I see anyone up there in this military truck comes and they're like, and I'm with my buddy Wookie, who's a very important lawyer. And, um, he's the military guys are pissed that I'm there at mm. first make us get in the truck and, um, it's Saturday. I have a flight in like six hours and, um, to come here and I'm, uh, they're, you know, telling me that like, they're, they might have to arrest me. Like that I'm, what I'm doing is super illegal. And I'm like, you can't arrest me. I'm going hunting with Cam Haynes tomorrow. I fly out tonight and immediately their tune changed. They're like, Oh, wait, I think I've seen you on his Instagram before. And then they're asking questions and like, are you the ultra runner? And I'm like, that's what, what I'm doing out here, <laughs> you know? And they, they, uh, ended up letting us go, you know, even though like minutes before that, they're like calling their superiors and trying yeah. to figure out what to do with us, which thankfully they didn't, they couldn't get a hold of any, anyone. So they ended up just dropping us off at the end of the road, which that, you know, that three mile section that we were going to run, mm-hmm. they dropped us off at the end of it. Um, oh. So we just, uh, and we tacked on at the end to make it 20. Nice. So perfect. Oh, that's yeah. Just a little, another little speed bump. I know. No I know. No biggie. Good story. <laughs> it's you a know, great story. it's a great story. It's just another example of like, Hey, we'll do whatever it takes. Yeah, and exactly. You made it here. You said what you had to say. You got out of the jam. Yeah. Name drop. <laughs> Name drop. Hey, whatever, <laughs> like I said, whatever it takes. Yeah. If that didn't work, who knows what might've had to maybe fight them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, Wookie, stand back. I can take them. Yeah, yeah, this might get ugly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, then you made it here, and we bombed down uh, to some great blacktail hunting country. Mm-hmm. And it's like I was thinking, I felt pretty confident just because of the time of year it is. November, mm-hmm. first week of November, the bucks are rutting. You, uh, you hadn't killed a buck, but we had. You know, Tanner went. Uh, my buddy Kevin Akers, mm-hmm. Ron Hofsis, of course, has you know access to some great blacktail country. So I, I felt like we had a good team mm-hmm. assembled, right? And uh, we got down there, and it was it was. I'm so thankful that we had. So you got in at noon, picked you up to the airport. It was about you know didn't get down there till about three thirty, I think. It's kind of a long drive, but Kevin has a gun. It's a it's a, uh, man, what's, what kind of gun is that? Uh, do you remember what kind of it is? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's a Sig Cross. Sig Cross. Yeah. And, um, so we got down there and Joe, and I don't, not even sure of Joe's last name, but he is like a gun guru. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so we go over to his house and we're going to go through and give you a, t- or basically Kevin's giving you a tutorial on his, because it's his gun. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so you're going through and there's a lot to keep track of. I mean, that scope is, you know, next level, the gun's really nice. It's got a two stage trigger. It's, uh, it's just tactical, right? Tactical. Exactly. And Joe is, you know, I mean, he knows rifles inside and out and his range is incredible. So we're sitting there, you're on a bench, Kevin's going through the ins and outs of this rifle. We have paper at a hundred. We have steel at 
300, steel at 450, and steel at 988. We, you know, we don't need that one. That's that's a thousand yards. But we start start you off on paper. You're shooting pretty good. You know, I mean, once we figured out, you know, where to hold and what dot we're shooting at and everything else, you were very consistent. So we got the gun. And how, how was that? I mean, oh, it was great. Yeah. It was, it was so fun, especially shooting the steel. Like, that was awesome. Because yeah. the paper, I couldn't really see where, mm-hmm. you know, it, um, I couldn't tell. There's so, it's, that the paper's been shot a lot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so it was hard to tell if I yeah. was getting it. Yeah. But, you know, when you hit the steel, that's obvious. It, yeah. It rings. It rings. Yeah. yeah that's you, nice. So you had, so we, we got you on 300 and you rang the bell. Mm-hmm. I mean, hit the steel and then we're like hey do we want to try 450 <laughs> which is a poke right <laughs> yep it's a poke and uh first shot you missed it but i was watching through the scope and i saw the or through the spotting scope and i saw the wind was kind of pushing to the right i'm like well i think that bullet drifted right so you held on the left hand side of the steel and smoked it 450 yards. How did that feel? <laughs> that, that was great. Yeah. You know, I had also awesome instruction and like just a sick gun. So mm. that helped a lot, I'm sure. But uh, it felt really good. I yeah. was I was pretty pleased with myself. Yeah, you should be. That's, that's great shooting. But it also gave everybody a lot of confidence that... And you were familiar with the gun because yeah. it's there's it's not just like a you know lever action thirty thirty mm-hmm. like the old school totally brush, brush totally guns. there's a lot going on with this I gun, know. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is sweet because it's fun and uh, but yeah it gave everybody a lot of confidence that hey if you get an opportunity felt I pretty can, good mm-hmm. you know we're not trying to shoot offhand just holding that gun up at you know three hundred yards or something the goal is to get a rest have time, talk through it. You know, this is like a, a perfect scenario. Mm-hmm. And as it turned out, it wasn't quite that relaxed. But <laughs> again, we had confidence that yeah. if you got an opportunity, we felt good about it. Yeah, totally. And I tried to shoot the 450 without a rest after that. You know, remember, I was like, I want to walk up and see. And I could oh, find right. it in the scope really quickly, but then I missed. Yeah. It was just, you know, without a rest, it's just hard. It's Yeah, with that, you know, so the stock of the gun... It's kind of floating, you know, you have, totally. yeah, it's just, that's a tough, that's a long shot. Which is interesting because that's what we almost had to do. I mean, before you sat me down, that's mm-hmm. what I was trying to do, but a little more adrenaline there. We, we can't, we can't sneak ahead. Yeah. We got to build the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after that, um, we went and had a good dinner at the code. So mm-hmm. that was when, so how did, then how were you thinking you should, the night before your hunt. How was it? Uh, I had a belly full of nachos <laughs> and all night long I dreamt of the scope. Yeah. Just looking through the scope. Um, not necessarily shooting anything. I didn't, I don't even remember seeing any animals in the scope, but I just, and I think that was a good thing because that was the thing that, you know, you're telling me that Truett was having trouble with is finding the the, side acquisition. Yeah. Side finding ac- the animal. And so I got about, you know, five hours of sleep practice, <laughs> you know, just yeah. looking through. And then, um, but I was also so excited. So it was mm-hmm. very hard to sleep that night. It just, even though I took a red eye the night before, I couldn't sleep. Mm-hmm. You and I were both tossing and turning. I remember at one point I was like, we're both awake. <laughs> yeah, you know? I couldn't sleep either. I, yeah. I get so excited. I get, you know, I've never even deer hunted there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm taking... Uh, quite a few people down there, but I've never hunted myself, but I'm so excited just, you know, for you. Um, I wanted you to be successful, but I wanted to share, you know, the hunting that I grew up doing. Yeah. And that's Western Oregon blacktail. And it's like, this is, I don't know, it's special to me because it's always special sharing something you've done your whole life. So, but I wanted it to be, you know, I just wanted to be memorable and I wanted you to have a good time. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm thinking about all these scenarios where we could go, what we might see. You, you know, you, you were visualizing the scope and acquiring the animal or the sight picture through the scope. And I was envisioning glassing and finding a buck yeah. and what the buck might look like and what's going on. And so, yeah, it was, it was uh, yeah, a fitful night for sure. Yeah. 
Um, but that night when we were going to sleep, I was th- telling myself that like, you know, that the buck that I killed the next day, this was, that was its last night. And I was like, I was thinking about that and I was, you know, thanking that buck. I didn't even know what was going to happen, but I'm like such a firm believer in just like putting it out in the world. You're going to do it. Not like mm-hmm. if, you know, you're gonna. And then if it doesn't happen, like being at peace with that, but not leaving another option for yourself up here, you yeah. know, like speaking it into existence. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I, I like said that to myself before bed, Yeah. you know, thanked the future buck and hoped it was enjoying its last night in the dumping rain and the storm. Mm-hmm. Um, then, uh, had that fitful night and we got up and boogied. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was finally, it was the day, the mm-hmm. day of this whole process all accumulated into one day. And, um, uh, we were out, it seemed like perfect because it had, you know, you, you mentioned dumping rain. It was a storm morning. I mm-hmm. mean, it just pounded thunder, lightning. And I was, I was thinking to myself, great, because these bucks will be hunkered down waiting out of the storm. Got up in the morning. I looked. I go outside and look up, and you know there's stars, and you can see the moon. I'm like, okay, the storm passed. These deer will be making up for lost time. You know, they had to to weather the storm all night and kind of stay put. And now they're going to be out feeding and rutting and everything else. So we go to where Truett killed his buck, which is a a big unit. And uh, Tanner's buddy Brock killed his buck last year. It's like always produced and saw other bucks there. Mm-hmm. It's like it's one of my favorite units. And um, we go there, glass the hell out of it, spent a lot of time breaking it apart, didn't see one deer. I know. <laughs> what were you thinking at that time? Well, you know, it, at first I was, you know, as we got out of the truck, you're like, we're going to see some deer here, you mm-hmm. know? And I, and secretly I was trying not to think this way, but in my gut, I was like, I kind of hope that we, that we don't find one here mm-hmm. because I... I don't want it to be over so fast. Yeah. You know, I, I really, you know, I was excited for the whole day. Mm-hmm. You know, I was excited to like, so, you know, you guys were like, maybe one, you'll find one on the road. And I was like, awesome. But I was, I was secret, you know, you never want to say no. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't, I was trying not to think that way, but I was, uh, I wasn't mad about not seeing anything. I was yeah. like, okay. And I was just watching guys glass. I learned a lot, you know, I half the time I was glassing and the other half the time I'm watching you guys glass and then like implementing it, you know, watching like your patterns and how long you stay in each place. Mm. Um, so like it, it was super valuable for me and also just like where you stop. And then I like found my own little mm-hmm. rhythm of like stopping in my own spots, you know, and, um, so it was super valuable and, uh, and, and at that point we got in the truck and I was like, great, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. we just had an hour and a half. I got to watch these guys. I got to talk to them. I learned a lot. Um, and then we went to the next spot and I was like totally content doing that. You know, I, I was having fun at that mm-hmm. point still, like, obviously I wanted to find a buck, but at like no point was I impatient, you know? Yeah. And Kevin one time said, you know, we might drive up and there'll be one standing there and it'll just be like a fire drill kind of, which happens a lot, you know, when you're on logging rows like that. But I know for me, I did not want that to happen. Yeah. I, I wanted it to be like a hunt, you know, Same. not, not just a frantic, you know, and we said, uh, you take them when you can get them. Cause there's a lot of times where mm-hmm. maybe that's your only opportunity and you know, that's the way hunting goes sometimes. But in my it, for me, I did not want it to be that. I wanted it to be something like a, a hunt where we had, you know, we had to make something happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, <laughs> it started dumping. Uh, we were soaked. Oh my God. I've never, of course I live here. I know all about the weather and I was, you know, me and Tanner were, were saying this, we were like the most ill prepared, basically just a hoodie, just like this with no shirt on. And just soaked. Well, and I was wearing all your clothes and Kevin's clothes because I texted you and I was like, what should I bring? You said boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's it. I did. I wanted to try to eliminate as many hurdles as possible. That was so perfect. I, fi- I figured if, if all I say, if you just bring boots, we'll figure out the rest. Yeah. And then it wouldn't be like some, another stressor for you to like, oh my God, I got to get this and that and this and that. I didn't want to have any list of anything. I just figured 
Just make it simple. Just bring boots. We'll that was take, perfect we'll for take me. care of it. Yeah, it was awesome. So I had the most clothes on and I still was soaked <laughs> and so cold all day. Yeah. Um, you know, worth it. Obviously, I'm not complaining, but uh, it was funny. It was raining really hard. <laughs> oh, my God. It was pouring. Um, so then we ended up going and checking. We call this one place Piss Pot. And we had seen just after Truett killed his buck last weekend, we saw a big buck and, uh, we saw, we were like, well, let's go and check this unit. Cause that's where we saw it. And, uh, we go there and the, the weather is just pounding and just coming in from the West. And this is a West facing unit. And, uh, I'm like, there's not going to be anything out here. So I wanted to go back over to the other side of the hill and, uh, check another unit that would be a little more protected and the wind would be good for us to to glass it and not be mm -hmm. spooking animals so we get back in the truck i go bombing over the ridge and uh felt really good because by that time though you know the weather was in and out all day but by this time it has it had passed the the worst of the rain had passed and it was clearing and i thought well the deer should be up hopefully we see something we get out there and man and it didn't take long and uh I looked down and there was, we had our buck. Yeah, immediately. Um, I hadn't even taken out my binoculars yet before mm -hmm. you were, you found a buck. And then you helped me find it because it was far. So it took me a second. Um, found it and that was, that was so the what start. Happened? What happened? Um, well, we found the buck. You know, it's, it was like it what? 420 feet or something you said and yards. um or yards yeah thanks um and uh you know you it was too far for us to feel confident taking even a shot. though you just had hit the the steel at 450 the day before yeah i didn't i didn't want to put you in that position you i know, didn't want to be in that position yeah. either it's like it, yeah potentially you could kill that buck yeah yes uh, the perfect scenario you've made that shot just a day prior but, you but know, on the second try, you know, right. I didn't want to take that chance no. and you knew that. And that's something that I told you before this is I really mm -hmm. wanted to take a clean shot. Yeah. I didn't want the animal to suffer. Mm -hmm. Um, so without really telling me, which I thought was awesome, you book it down the hill, <laughs> down mm -hmm. this dirt road. Kevin's like, let me see your gun before you go. Checks the gun, puts it back on my shoulder and it's like, go sprint after you, um, with the gun on my back. Uh, then I see you take a sharp right. You start booking it down this ridge that's all bushes and stuff, super steep, um, which I thought was awesome. I was like going down that and I was like, this is badass. I've got <laughs> on my back. I'm like <laughs> swinging from brush to brush, you yeah, know, <laughs> making it, it through. Yeah, it, it was, was super steep, but it was fun. It was mm -hmm. like fun terrain to move through. And, um, you know, and having the gun on your back, that's like another element to, you know, f making sure that, you know, because it, it, with all the thick brush, like the gun kept like ripping off my back. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no, <laughs> can't get there without the gun. Um, so we booked it down this like steep, super steep, loose ridge with that was pretty, had pretty thick brush and, you know, find you at this like small little plateau um, where you're looking for it and you're starting to, you look over and you tell me, shh, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. Cause we're getting close to, yeah. you know, I wanted to cut that distance down, started at 442 at the road. And I figured there was a little knob that I thought if we could get to, I mean, we're, it's going to be slam dunk if, but if we can get there, but there's a lot of risk because we had three people, um, Tanner had the camera, me, you, and we're closing in to, mm -hmm a hundred yards or so. And yeah, I mean, if, especially when the sound, when we're on the buck side of that little spine ridge, that sound is going right to them. Mm -hmm. If we're on the back side, we've got more leeway. Yep. So the, uh, unfortunately the trail went right down the spine of the ridge. Yeah. So it, it was a little bit blocked by the brush and everything, but we still had to be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we get down there, and I'm being as quiet as possible. Um, we are, you know, you can't find the buck at first, and we're we're looking. Um, I'm following you, and then all of a sudden, I um, hear Tanner going, pss, pss, 
trying to get your attention. And then he's like, get, get Cam's attention, make it a little sound. You look over and all of a sudden the buck's there. It's like 50 yards from us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then, uh, you know, but it starts to hear us. It, it starts getting spooked. Um, so while the, you know, we're getting in a good position, um, the buck starts taking it up the hill on the other side of that ridge, Mm -hmm. you know, across from us. Um, yeah. And then, uh, let's see, we, you get me all set up and at first I'm standing, you know, as I said before, my little spoiler, I was, I was trying to, you know, find the buck in the scope while standing, which, you know, with the nerves and this booking it down the hill, I was just moving a little bit too much. I felt really calm, but you know, it's just, you know, it's even different moving, um, in a, like, I felt like I moved less when we were practicing and I was still just standing then in the, in the field. Um, the heat of the moment always, yeah. I mean, there's just more emotion. Oh, totally. Yeah. And I mean, even if you're calm, it's just, it's because there's, there's a time element. The exactly. target's not going anywhere. You got all day. Exactly. The buck is definitely moving. It was moving then. <laughs> Getting out of there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, even if you are calm, it's like there's a, a, a sense of urgency. Totally. Mm. Um, and then, so you get me down. Um, and the other element is like, I could, I was having trouble hearing you because you're on my left side. So, um, and I can't talk loud because the bucks talk are there. Loud, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm deaf in my left ear, but once I was on the ground and you were above me and we weren't, you know, side to side, then I could hear your instructions way better. So I knew exactly where to look in the scope and you were like red bush, look for the white head. Mm-hmm. And as soon as you said that, and I could hear it, found it in the scope. Um, and luckily right at that time, it stopped. It just like stopped for me to, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the grunt. Gave and it the old luck. grunt. Yeah. yeah. So it stopped and I was able to, you know, take a few deep breaths, get, you know, I, you know, because it's a, the, the trigger, you like pull it halfway and then you pull it and I pulled it halfway like three times, two or three times before actually taking my shot. Um, took some deep breaths. And then when I was sure I was like, this is my last chance got it and I didn't actually know I hit it because I didn't hear like smack or anything until I looked up and I saw the deer immediately the buck tumble down the hill it was and that's exactly what I wanted quick death it was pretty and then I freaked out I was so happy (laughs) I I almost cried (laughs) I was happy too it was I mean I was relieved because you know the last thing you want is a wounded animal yeah I mean as hunters we need to offer the animal a merciful kill. Yes, I understand it doesn't always happen because hunting is imperfect. Death is imperfect. It's, uh, you know, it things can go wrong. Mm-hmm. And um, I did not want you to feel bad or there to be any negativity with with the hunt or any emotions associated with it. So I was I was as happy and relieved as you that yeah. you made such a great shot. And it was... It was intense because that buck, and I almost think there's a little bit of fate involved too because that buck had been going at a pretty good clip. I gave him the grunt. He stopped, but he stood there for some time. Yeah, you know? like a full minute. Yeah, it, yeah, maybe. It, it felt like that. It felt like that. I think I don't think it was quite a minute, but it was a while, yeah. you know, and he said, you know, it was almost like offering himself up yeah. and, you know, um, I don't know. It was just like a special moment and you, it gave you time to collect yourself. You said you applied pressure on the trigger a couple of times at two stage trigger and let up cause you didn't feel steady. So when you finally did feel steady and then I stopped giving instructions because I wanted it to be not like, cause I've had, I've made mistakes myself with my kids. I'm like, you got to hustle, got to hustle, got to, you know, that doesn't help anything. So I was just like, no, I've, you know, my poor kids had to weather the, the <laughs> storm, but I just was like, you know, you were on, I said, you on them? I turned up the scope, you know, mm-hmm. increase the mag- magnification. And then I'm like, it's up now it's up to you. And yeah. when you felt comfortable, man, you just made a perfect shot. That buck stood there, took it like a champ down quickly. Buck was dead and we were 
we felt pretty pumped. Yeah, I was so pumped. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, when we got out of the car before we did it, I just had this feeling, you know, that we were going to get it. And then when you took off, I again, I was telling myself, I was like, we, get, we have it. We have it. Um, and, you know, to see that, you know, come through, it was just so incredible, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you put these things out in the world and it doesn't happen exactly how those, I mean, and as you said, it could not have gone better. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was incredible. We make our way, we cross the Creek. So we were ba basically on parallel spine ridges mm -hmm. and he, you know, at, he was in the creek bottom and then he came up and then he was straight across from us essentially when you shot and we made our way over there and it's steep it took a little bit to get over there and, yeah and found him and uh you know it was <laughs> people might think it was less than ideal conditions i i think it was perfect it was just pouring rain yeah it was we were soaked cold and i would i wouldn't have wanted it any other way me either. I mean, like I even, you know, booking it down, I was like, this is awesome. It was like the spot that we, um, you guys were cleaning him was like so beautiful. I got to watch you guys work with this animal and just so efficiently and like this little plateau in between, you know, in this, it was, it was just like insane pouring rain. Yeah. But it was cool. Um, yeah, and then you you let me pack it out too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How was that? Hard. I'm sore today. Yeah. You just killed me on the run because I'm in my. <laughs> and when we were flat, I was fine. Going uphill, I was like, oh my gosh, my muscles have not been this sore in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but it was awesome. I, you know, you, um, Truett, or um, Tanner took up um, the quarters, and I, and I. Um, took up a bunch of loose meat and the the head and um you had the pack on at first and you were like you 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 should feel how this feels to go up this super steep ridge with this mm -hmm. and I um I was really happy you said that because I didn't want to slow us down it was really cold and I knew with me carrying the pack it was going to take longer but when you offered I was like oh I'm not giving this up yeah. <laughs> I was like no um and you didn't you you carried that all the way to the rig yeah I, was, yeah, I was like, I was a little nervous because I know you've, you've had an injury, you know, mm -hmm. you had surgery. Last thing I want is anything to go wrong. You, you know, you're so talented, such an amazing runner. I would hate if something it contributed to an injury that, that, you know, set you back. So I was, I was kind of nervous, but you were so strong, so impressive and so determined to get that up there. It was, I mean... <laughs> You know, that all of it was a highlight for me, but that was a specific highlight that stands out is your grit and determination. I was very impressed. Man, thanks. I, I was like, you know, I, I was giddy when you were like, you want to take the pack? I was like, yes, yeah. <laughs> let me. I really wanted to try because that's a huge part of it, mm -hmm. you know, is packing out the animal. Um, and I, I wanted to do that. And um, yeah, it was super hard. You know, I spent half the time in my stomach it was just so steep that you know I was either on all fours and then if I'd slip I'd just you know go right on my stomach mm -hmm. um which was it was fine it was good like I'm I'm actually like really glad it was that hard um I was dying though I got to the top saw a log and immediately had to sit I was like this, <laughs> yeah. this pack is so fucking heavy um but it was cool. It was really cool that, you know, I had you guys there. And the other thing was, is like when you're, you have that heavy pack on, you can't really look at your line because mm -hmm. you have no room to like look. Yeah. Um, so I was just kind of like blindly walking into bushes until you guys were helping me pick my line, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but it was cool. I'm so sore today. I, <laughs> I was saying, you know, um, getting on the toilet this morning. I had to brace myself on the wall before I sat down. Mm -hmm. I, I could not believe it. Yeah. Well, that's like, you got the full experience, Yeah. right? The Oregon mountains and delivered. And I mean, we took what, uh, what they offered and it was a big buck and you're taking a bunch of meat home. You're getting 
the deer mounted, yeah. getting a shoulder mount. I mean, <laughs> that's crazy. And it's just a beautiful buck, a dark horn four by four with eye guards. Which any blacktail hunter would know that that's a trophy. It's a big old white faced buck, giant head, huge body, tons of good meat. Um, I, you know, and you couldn't, as I said earlier today, if you, if we would have written a script for let's have the perfect experience for, <laughs> for your first blacktail hunt this would have been it yeah there's nothing else nothing else could have went better i know can you believe it 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 feels still like it feels unreal mm -hmm. even though we got to eat the tenderloins this morning even though you know it's the next day and i you know in my body feel that hard work it, that it was like so magical that it doesn't feel real and like magical is the only word that i can put towards it because you're right it was to the T what I wanted. We didn't get it at, on the first place we went. We didn't get it um, on the road. We had to work for it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there were, it was like a high pressure situation. And that's, I wanted, you know, you said before we, when we were driving around, you were like, let's see how Cat does under pressure. And I wanted that. I mm -hmm. wanted to see what, how I did. Yeah. You know, um, and so it was cool to have that and then to get to execute. Yeah. So, I mean, with, with how meaningful that is, what, what do you say? Cause you know, there's people who don't under don't hunt, don't understand hunting, don't understand like, you know, why you'd kill an animal, you know, especially the running community can be fickle that way. Totally. You know? What do uh, you say to, to people that, that question that? You know, I think there's a couple things, but I think the most important thing is like truly understanding where your food comes from is really important you know meat in this country is not going away and how we consume it right now it's so disconnected you know as we talked about like i grew up in a ranching town in hawaii um and i never you know it there was no reason to think about it because i saw the cattle and i was like oh there's a cattle mm -hmm. i eat that um but when i moved to the mainland and i you know and i'm a runner i'd like you know, and I'd travel, I'd run by factory farms. And I, I actually went vegetarian for a while because I was like, this is fucking repulsive. It's mm -hmm. horrible. I, and I'm, you know, believe it or not, I'm pretty sensitive, you know, I'm affected by animal suffering and, you know, seeing that it just t totally turned me off from eating meat for a while. You know, I, I lose too much weight when I don't eat meat, probably because I am a terrible cook, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, so what I've learned from that is like the disconnect between where we get our food in this country, whether it be produce or our meat, um, is such a problem. And I think it leads to obesity because we don't appreciate our food. It's a huge food waste problem. And, you know, when you eat a meat, you're still when you're eat, eating meat from a grocery store, you're still taking a life, you know, or still like reaping the rewards from a life. But getting to understand like oh this is where it comes from this is what you're you know has to be sacrificed when to fuel you to make sure that you live and that you know um that that's important and it's and that's kind of why i've been attracted to hunting um you know as we talked about about 10 years ago when i first moved to colorado i um met this guy pete who is uh, the owner of Winter Park Training Company, trading company, um, where I was working, and he'd sometimes let me sleep in there when it got really cold because I was living out of my car. He, I mean, he didn't let me. I had a key and let myself in, and then he'd be like, you know, there's cameras, just no boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so I, uh, um, you know, he he was an elk hunter, and he, he bow hunted, and that was my first exposure, and I could not believe it. I could mm -hmm. not believe that we were eating meat. I, I didn't even know what an elk was, mm -hmm. you know. Um, grew up in Hawaii, went to school in California, and it, I was, like, blown away. And, like, but, and then, you know, I was so attracted to it because it was a way to sustain myself, reduce my own impact, um, environmental impact, and truly understand what it means to eat meat and... You know, so anyone who can't face that reality, you know, with hunting, 
you know, shouldn't be able to face that reality to with, you know, the food at the grocery store. And I understand um, if people are uncomfortable hunting, it's not for everyone, but understanding that the importance of it, not only from, you know, an environmental perspective, but also a preservation perspective, it has a huge impact on not only, you know, where do you think the money for li- hunting license go? It goes to protecting those places. And then, you know, the hunters help control the animal population. It's crucial. Um, it's crucial to keeping, you know, the this these areas wild, mm-hmm. you know, wild and protected. Would you go to other countries like Europe? It's not wild there. Right. You know, I've done a lot of running there and I love it and it's spectacular. But what I love about running, especially out West, but in the U.S. in general, is everywhere you go in the back country, it is wild, mm-hmm. you know? Because <laughs> those animals are there. Because those animals are there. Those animals are protected and the habitat's protected and the ecosystem works because we follow the North American wildlife model. Mm-hmm. And that includes hunting because hunting is conservation. That that money goes to, to making sure everything works like it's supposed to mm-hmm. and keeps it wild. And keeps it wild. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, what I'd say to people especially in the running community where I just think running hunting is so misunderstood. Um, educate yourself before you judge, you know, um, have an open mind, talk to hunters, you know, um, we took every piece of meat that we could on that. You know, you, you even took all the rib meat that people, even though there's like no fat or anything, you took it all, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm going to get to eat that. And that, none of that animal is going to waste. And that's, right. that's like so important. And I think that is misunderstood. And I think, you know, you know, I think also people don't think that we appreciate this loss, you know, but we understand the loss mm-hmm. and that makes it all the more special, you know, because you, you know, that disconnect when you buy food at the grocery store, you're not really understanding what you're taking. Mm-hmm. Even if you try, you right. know, you're not. And it, it that is like, you know, a disservice to this country, I think, you know, because then what, you know, if you're, it, 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 there's no worth to the food. And so, you know, then we overconsume and we waste. Yeah. And that's, you know, people have no problem sending half a steak they've ordered and eaten back to the kitchen or into the garbage, basically. Yeah. You know, I'm, oh, I'm stuffed, ate too, too much bread, you know? That was an animal. Yeah. It was an animal's life that's going in the garbage now. Whereas you said, we took every ounce off that buck you killed and we cherish it because we earned it and it's going to be valued and you're going to sit around and share that meat with those that you love. Mm -hmm. And that you're going to have that, that, (laughs) that buck's head mounted on your wall and that's going to be honored. And you're going to talk about it. You're going to remember that experience. And so if the, if the meat's cherished, the animals honored. How night and day different is that than people who are ordering hamburgers and steaks, throwing them away? Maybe they're even eating them, but there is no, there's no respect or honor in that meal. Yeah, they don't know anything about that life. Yeah, but a life was given and sacrificed. So it's like to me, it feels like, of course, I'm biased, but hunters should be looked up, looked up to. Yeah. for how we respect the land and the animal and how we cherish that life. And it's like, I feel like hunters understand that relationship so well because we are taking a life, we, we can appreciate life, death, and that, that, uh, that, you know, it's a dance basically, but that's how we survive. Yeah. And it's, we see it, we're part of it. Yeah, and seeing it is like, you know, it's a reality check, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, and even watching you, um, gut that buck, I was like, man, it's crazy to see because he, uh, you know, he's, that's like us, like we're just sacks of meat too, you Mm -hmm. know, and it's wild and it, it really brings life into perspective. And as we talked about on the way up, it like really simplifies life. Like we need food, you know, to, sustain ourselves and like that so does he and it's just it it truly is just a cycle and like you know and it's cool it's it's cool to strip things down like that and that's why I love ultra running is because it strips you down to 
you know, your barest self that mm -hmm. is, you know, who you are as a human. <clears throat> it's in like all your basic needs and, and hunting does that too. You know, yeah. it is our most basic need. You know, as a, you know, after we got that buck processed out in the field, we're on that spine ridge on that little plateau and it's pouring rain and it kind of had cleared off, but we're standing there and I didn't want that moment to end because, you know, what I said there is like, this is actually life. Yeah. This is life. Outside of the mountains is like a muted form of life. It's like a distraction. It's not real. What's real is in the mountains, killing what you're going to eat. Yeah. This is real as it gets. And that's what I feel most alive. And to share that with, with you who, you know, it, the way you appreciate it, the way you verbalize it, it's so meaningful. The way you've like embraced this, it's, uh, yeah, it's powerful. So I thank you. It's pretty, no, thank you. I mean, like when I say opportunity of a lifetime to come and, and learn from you, it's, it's beyond like my wildest dreams like to get to do that. You know, I, again, that was my introduction to hunting probably over 10 years ago, actually. And, you know, was when I ate elk chili in the freezing cold and I was like, what's an elk, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, you shot that with a bow, you know? Um, and like, it's always, it's always been a, a dream of mine. And I actually, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, but right when you started following me on Instagram in 2017, after I won Western, I reached out to you and I was like, do you want to like hang out? Like, I want to know about <laughs> hunting. You know, I don't, I probably, I don't know. That's I was like, awesome, I have, though. yeah. And I, I like, I'm just, do you want to hang out? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, was like <laughs> I, I need to learn yeah. about hunting. I was like, I, you know, and I, uh, I, I just think it's so cool. And I, and, why I think it's so cool. And like, you know, again, people might have this perception that because I really appreciate hunting, I, I don't care about the, the loss of life. And that could not be further from the truth. And, you know, I am, I, I like care a lot. And like, you know, I've gone vegetarian several times in my life because I don't like the idea of an animal suffering in a factory farm, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just not the answer for me. And it's not right. the answer for this country either. I think the answer is understanding where food comes from, mm -hmm. you know, because the, we need meat. We can't all go vegetarian. <laughs> it's just, it does, you know, we just can't. Um, it's not healthy for some people. And that mm -hmm. is the, just the truth. Um, for some people it works great, but like for me, I, I just like lose weight and like, it's, it's too hard. Um, but understanding where my food comes from has made me live a healthier life and, and, and has increased my respect for the animal. And I feel like, you know, has made me reluctant to support places where, you know, I know the animals are suffering. Like I, you know, I'm not rich, but I ball out on meat. You know, mm -hmm. when I buy meat, I make sure I know where it's coming from, mm -hmm. you know? And that's something that I splurge on, um, because that's, there's, that's where my values lie. And so like how I'm honoring that and I'm honoring not just the animal that I killed yesterday, but animals in general by, you know, yeah, I eat meat. So I am going to be the one that that kills the animal. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, that's been just a dream of mine. So, mm -hmm. so I can't thank you enough. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it means as much to me as it does you, I'll be honest. <laughs> and I like that story where you first were introduced over 10 years ago, ate elk chili killed, you know, by a bow hunter. And it's fitting that tonight we ate elk chili Killed by me yeah, in Arizona this year. You're right. Yeah. So the bookends of that. So your, cool. Your first journey and then tonight. And then the the everything in between is just incredible. Yeah. And I'm glad you sent a message that said you want to hang out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. Me and too. I, I really value your friendship. I value your authenticity. 
And I just, I, you're a special person and thank you for coming to Oregon and going hunting with me. Thanks. I, I'll be a yes man anytime you ask. Thank you so much. <laughs> Clearly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get, you need to get some rest. You got to fly home tomorrow. You got a big wedding to be part of. Yep. Yep. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, it's Cameron Haynes here. I'm going to be giving away this brand new Ford Raptor 2023 fully loaded badass truck. It's got 20 inch wheels, 35 inch tires. The tax man loves coming for that money, right? I'm giving away 10,000 cash to offset that for the win. You get a truck and 10,000 in cash. I want you to win this brand new 2023 Ford Raptor. Enter to win, CameronHayes.com. Keep hammering. Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I lose. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood to why I am relentless. My fault, they want someone to blame. They sent their hate, it fuels my pace. I am Roy Tough. I am the change, the fuel, endure. Feeling like Cam Haynes.